Welcome to Minister's Message. It's a beautiful day here in the Seaboard Villages. As you see behind me, the Murray Firth and over to the northeast corner of Scotland. We are looking forward to our 5K fun run and walk coming up between the 1st and 7th of May. So you can participate uh, and you can just take pictures of yourself doing it or videos, send them to me, we'll bring them all together and we'll uh, create a wee video and share it on social media for everybody to see. Uh, to enter into our new our 5k fun run and walk all you have to do is uh, submit uh, any donation to the New Church Fund. You can do that by going onto our website and uh, donating on the link there. You can also do it by putting an envelope into the church uh, if you so wish. But speaking of our website, let me uh, show you and let me encourage you to go on to our new website, brand new, done by uh, Susan Bain here in the congregation. It is uh, really, really good and I'm so excited that we're finally at this stage to uh, show this new website, hopefully a little easier, more colourful to, to look around and uh, you can navigate your way around the website. So you can find on there more info about uh, the New Church Fund, uh, a link to a video that Isla Skamen has done and much, much more uh, on there as well. Easy links to our YouTube channels, our sermons, minister message and so on. So have a look at our website and the 5K Fun Run or Walk. We are continuing with our theme of evangelism here on Minister Message. Uh, last week we had Craig Dyer from Christianity Explored Ministries and uh, Craig was uh, telling me about a passion for life. And this is something that I want to uh, bring to you as a viewers, whether you're here in Tain and Fern or elsewhere. It's something the Free Church is going to really get on board with, a passion for life. So I've invited John McKinnon from A Passion for Life to come and tell us a little bit more about it, what, uh, what to expect and what's expected of us. Well, hello. It's a wonderful privilege to be with you this week as part of your minister's message, and particularly in a month when you're looking at evangelism. And that really is uh, one of the greatest desires of my life that the local church should be equipped and trained and the people released to share ever increasingly the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ with family, with friends, with acquaintances and neighbours and in truth with strangers that we meet as we journey through life. But uh, I want to speak today about a movement for mission and evangelism which is a grass-rooted movement of mission and evangelism in the life of the local church. And what I want to talk to you just for a little while today is about a passion for life. Now you can look at the website apassionforlife.org.uk and there when you open up that website you will meet the little strap line that will say a month of mission, a lifestyle of evangelism, a passion for life. And as well as being the training director for Word One to One, I'm the training director for A Passion for Life as we seek to mobilise and encourage and equip Christians in churches all over the UK and Ireland to work together towards a month of mission in Easter at Easter 2022, so March, April 2022. But we want to do that by equipping God's people all over the UK and Ireland to be sharing their faith day in, day out, week in, week out as a lifestyle of evangelism. Paul, when he was writing one of his lockdown epistles, writing to the church at Philippi, wrote these words, I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Many people say to me, John, what is a passion for life uh, all about? Well, in truth, it's all about the churches partnering together, acknowledging that everything that we do 
for the sake uh, of Jesus. Everything that we do for the glory of his name is always a partnership in grace. None of us have earned our salvation. This is all the free gift of God to us in Christ. And so we're a partnership in grace. It should always be a partnership in prayer, but it should also always be a partnership in the gospel. And so a passion for life is seeking to mobilise the churches across the UK and Ireland to partner together in making Jesus known in our local communities. And I've been so excited as uh, Andrew sent me the links to what you've been doing uh, as a church this month, just in thinking about uh, how you can equip yourself better to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And in A Passion for Life, what we're doing is we're producing a, a modular framework of downloadable training material that local churches can take and use and bespoke that for their own situation. But of course, you and I both know that we want to be making Jesus known every day of life. And so that's why it's about ever increasingly encouraging a culture of evangelism, a culture of making Jesus known in the heart of our community. And if I can help and assist in any way, uh, then please don't hesitate to get in touch with me and Andrew will have all those details. Let me just, uh, you know, pray God's blessing on you in all that you're doing there in Tain and Fern as you seek to make Jesus known. Uh, and let me encourage you that all that you're hearing this month in evangelism, take that and apply it to your own heart and life and magnify him and glorify him. The Lord bless you. Thanks so much to John for sending that video to us, informing us a little bit more about a passion for life. Uh, you can uh, find it even more by going to the Free Church podcast, that's Generation, uh, either on their podcast or their YouTube channel. And you can listen to David Meredith interviewing John in more detail. Uh, a Passion for Life also have their own podcast for you to uh, tune in and listen to as well. The thing about A Passion for Life is that it's not just about the one-off event in Easter 2022, but rather it's about a building up of ourselves for a lifetime of sharing the gospel. And that's really one of the reasons I wanted uh, to speak about evangelism here on Minister's Message, so that each of us would be encouraged as we listen to the likes of Donnie from the Faith Mission or Craig Dyer from Christianity Explored or, or John there from A Passion for Life, that we would all be encouraged, whoever we are, to go out and to share the good news of Jesus with whoever the Lord puts into our path. You know, even as I've stood up here, I've said this many times in many of the places that I've been recording these messages, but I've had the great opportunity to uh, share and talk to three or four different people that I've never met before and tell them about what I'm doing and tell them a little bit about Jesus. You know, why would you be here? Why would you want to tell others? Well, that's the same for all of us. We love Jesus and we want to tell others about him. Well, talking about telling others about Jesus, we gathered for worship this coming Sunday, Lord willing. I uh, would love for you to join us, whether in person or on our YouTube channel at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. Uh, Alistair will be preaching in the morning. I'll be preaching in the evening. Uh, both of us are actually in between sermon series at the moment. Uh, we hope to be uh, restarting our Exodus series to look at the second half of that book in a week or two's time. Uh, but at the moment we're in between series and that actually, uh, for me personally anyway, can be quite challenging because when you come to uh, sit at your desk on a, a Monday morning and consider where the Lord wants you to preach from this coming weekend, it can be, uh, it can take a lot more thinking, it can take a lot of praying to know that this is where the Lord wants you to go and to share with the folks in the congregation. Um, so it's interesting that Alistair has settled this week on Mark chapter 5, can it get any worse? As he thinks and considers uh, Jairus's daughter, she is pronounced dead 
And yet uh, Jesus comes on the scene with these words, Talitha cum, little girl, get up. And in the evening I'll be preaching from Matthew chapter 26. Uh, It really struck me as I read and thought about the words of Peter as he denied Jesus there in the courtyard, not once or twice, but three times, even cursing the fact that anybody would associate him with Jesus. And yet... He not only sins, but we see Peter's sorrow. He repents of what he has done and he comes back to the Lord. How great and compassionate is our God that he has seen all of our sin and he is willing to forgive it all. Well, I do hope uh, you have a blessed weekend. May the Lord be with you.